After Blackpool's successful trip to Wembley and of course their return to the Championship, we now know the 24 clubs that will make up the 2021-2022 season out in the second tier. But what are my picks? Who do I think will go to the Premier League and who do I think will go back down to League One? Well, I'll tell you my early door picks next. Today we're taking a look at my early door predictions for the 2021-2022 Championship campaign and we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new to the channel, where are they giving boys? Smash your subscribe button, keep bang up to date with all things Black and Rovers, like the Championship raid, world football, and we're all here in a bloody hotel. That's right, we're on the bloody road. I'll try to get ourselves back to PA. Of course, for my start of work, I go back to work Tuesday. But of course, before all that, I'm going to show you my new predictions for the 2021-2022 Championship campaign. And we'll get to that in just a second. A big, big shout out to the VIPs, the Patreons. Thank you for your continued support behind the scenes. I do appreciate it. And if you are out there and you think, you know what, I want to support that clown, I'll check out the link down below, patreon.com forward slash Roverseas. But anyway, I'm going to showcase you my picks from 12 all the way down to 24. And then, of course, the top half of the table. It's a 12th spot we have, of course, Birmingham, that's right, Lee Bowyer's boys uh, made a bit of a resurgence towards the back end of the season, of course, if the season was maybe another six weeks, eight weeks long, last campaign, they might have even ended up uh, comfortably in mid-table. They did get a bit of a battering on the final day with Rovers, uh, but of course, with Lee Bowyer at the helm, of course, ex-player, he knows what, what it takes to succeed at the club, and I think he'll get the move in the right direction. I do have them in uh, mid-table, 12th this time around, again, another season of, of progress for Birmingham, I, I know they want more than that, uh, but they're going to have to settle with just 12th spot uh, for this campaign. Birmingham City, 12th. Into 13th spot, we have Cardiff City. That's right, of course, Mick McCarthy's boys uh, did okay last season. Of course, he came in, uh, steadied the ship a little bit for, for the Welsh outfit, and of course, they did flatter uh, to get into those players, but ultimately falling a little bit short. This season, it's going to be a little bit different for them. And of course, maybe, just maybe, that uh, that opportunity for the playoffs was their one and only true shot with Mick McCarthy. I don't know. Of course, I had my reservations when he was hired. Of course, I went to bite the bullet on that a little bit last season, when, of course, they did flirt with those players. But ultimately, they failed, of course, just like everybody else outside the post, they did fail. Will they get to go again this time around? I don't think so. I think it's going to be more mid-table obscurity for Cardiff City. Will he still be there at the end of the season? Probably not. I think, of course, he'll have a, a bit of a worrying campaign, ultimately finishing mid-table. But, of course, they'll make the decision to pull the trigger and probably dismiss Mick McCarthy midway through the season. To 14th spot, we have Preston North End. That's right, of course, changing their manager at the end of last season. Alex, Alex Neal's no longer there. They brought in Frank McAvoy or whatever his name is. Of course, he did have a strong end to the campaign as, of course, as a caretaker manager. But what's he going to be like uh, with the bread and butter as, of course, mainstead manager? They have also lost a couple of key personnel in uh, the transitional period uh, from the back end of the season to the start of the season. Again, early door bets. I just think they're going to have a, a bit of an awkward first season with him in charge. So 14th for them. It's, of course, well, clear that of, of the relegation zones but nowhere near those player slots for, for, so for me early door pick for Preston North End will be 14th so into 15th spot, we have, of course, Gary Rowett's Millwall. That's right. Of course, last season, they were uh, towards the top end of the table. Maybe narrowly missed out on the playoffs, ultimately finishing off, I don't know, what was it, 12th, something like that. I don't really have the numbers in front of me. Uh, they are a stubborn sort of unit. I just don't know what they're going to get. And again, uh, I think their deepest, darkest concerns is to stay in the championship. Uh, this will be a bit of a, a letdown, and maybe it might even cost Rowett his job. But I'm going to go with a 15th spot for them, because uh, it's just so tight uh, between those those middle, middle echelons of the championship. And of course, at uh, the top half of the table. So I'm just going to play safe. Millwall 15th, unfortunately. Into 16th now. It's whole city, of course, got themselves promoted from League One last campaign as champions. And, of course, they'll hope to be sticking around at the championship this season with, a, with, of course, a decent display. Of course, they were a little bit hard done, I felt, getting relegated in the first place. Uh, but uh, they did bounce back uh, in quite convincing style. Of course, Malik Wicks uh, was, of course, a key figure for them this uh, past season. And, of course, keeping a hold of him will have also be massive to their intentions to stick around in the championship. Ultimately, I do think they'll be safe. Of course, McCann's boys uh, will, be, will be difficult to be. Of course, once the fans get back into the OKCOM, OK it'll be a much, much more difficult venue to be. And I do anticipate them to finish in comfortably in a 16th spot. 
the 70th spot we have Luton Town, of course. Uh, the key thing for them this season, of course, will be keeping hold of Nathan Jones. He is the heartbeat of that club. Of course, he, he, he left one season to go to Stoke. It didn't work out, but of course, then he came back with his tail between his legs to, of course, keep Stoke not only in the championship, but of course, pushing towards the top half of the table. Yes, I have them quite low. I just think it'll be a bit of a transitional season. They've just lost Collins to Cardiff. They're trying to bring in some other new players as well. So it might be a bit of a transitional season. I still think they'll be safe as houses, but ultimately, keep Nathan Jones and you'll be safe. And then, of course, next season, you may be pushing back off for, uh, to the Wards mid-table. 18th spot, we've got Bristol City. Of course, they will survive, of course, with Pearson now in charge. Of course, took over the back end uh, of last season where Bristol City were trying to get themselves into the top half of the table, maybe even push for the playoffs. Unfortunately, uh, what was his name? Holden did, couldn't do it, so Pearson came in. I'm not I'm not the biggest believer of Pearson. I know a lot of Rovers fans were looking at him as maybe as a, a, a Tony Mowbray replacement, um, but he's come in, and I don't think, I'm not been convinced with him at the back end of last season. I'm, I'm hoping to be proved wrong, and of course, Bristol City will hoping, be hoping I'm proved wrong as well, but I think they're going to be having a more of a, uh, a season of, of woe than a season of success. So I'm going to go with 18th place at Bristol City. Into 19th spot it is, of course, newly promoted Blackpool. Of course, they made it over the line over in the League One playoff. They'll be there in the Championship next season with, of course, Critchley at the helm. Of course, some really attractive players with Blackpool, but I think some of them might get lured elsewhere to some of the higher, higher echelon Championship clubs. And that's going to be the problem with Blackpool, trying to keep a hold of some of that talent. Uh, I do think they will survive. Of course, they're on a bit of a journey right now, of course, formerly of League Two, now slowly going to League One, and now, of course, back into the Championship once again. So, again, keeping hold of Critchley and maybe some of those lucrative uh, personnel We'll keep them uh, with a bit with a bit more uh, surgeons up that table, but ultimately I think they're just going to survive, and I've got them down into nineteenth. 20th spot we have of course new boys Peterborough United of course they come in with a lot of young blood a really good exciting talent but, uh, from League One but will they still be there in the championship of course Clark Harris top goal scorer last season of course been linked with Rangers amongst others uh, so for, for them in order for them to be any any uh, part uh, more than just relegation contenders they need to keep a hold of those of course maybe even strengthen them themselves I do have them hanging on in there in 20th it's a bit noisy out here so safety for them 20th and I'm sure they'll bite their hand off with that. So 20th, Peterborough United. In the 21st spot, we have, of course, I've got Stoke City. That's right. Of course, Michael O'Neill, the manager now, the ex-Northern uh, uh, Ireland uh, manager, now in charge, of course, the Potters. Of course, they are, of course, struggling to try and get their own kind of a brand kind of identity uh, for their football style. And I think next season, they're going to continue with that demise. And unfortunately, they're going to head closer to the drop. But unfortunately, stick around uh, for another season, but only by the skin of their teeth. So for me, Stoke City, 21st. Into 22nd spot, and of course, the first relegation spot. And unfortunately, I do see Huddersfield Town going down. Goodness gracious me, of course. I wasn't really impressed with them last season. They were one of the better uh, possession-based sides in, in the division, but unfortunately, that didn't really amount to much. And again, last season, there were signs that there were some already cracks in the foundations with, with Huddersfield Town. Don't believe really in the manager at the, at the moment, of course. No disrespect to the guy. I just think it, it, the championship is a special sort of league. And either you get it or you don't. And unfortunately, I don't think he's going to get it. Uh, they are making some already interesting moves in the transfer market, which, of course, might prove my theory wrong. But uh, for me, I think they're going to struggle. They did struggle last year, and I think this season, with a bit more competitive league, uh, they'll, they'll find themselves immersed in one, another relegation battle. But unfortunately, they're going to be on the wrong side of it. So into 26th spot, once again, is Huddersfield Town. It's a 23rd spot. We've got, of course, Coventry City. Mark Robbins did a fantastic job last time around, keeping them in the championship. But I think this this, this season, uh, coming into the, new, in the in the campaign in August, will be second season syndrome, and they will unfortunately go down. A lot of their uh, players have been uh, seen as lucrative options for the likes, of course, uh, Glasgow Rangers sniffing at uh, Hamer, and of course, Gordon with the goals last time around. He might be, uh, of course, lured elsewhere. But for me, I think it's going to be a second season of worry for Coventry. They did flatter to deceive last time around. Of course, did better than much people that expected but for me I think the quality of this division and the competitiveness at the bottom end will see Coventry City unfortunately go down has to do it and of course Derby County are going to be down in 24th spot they are going to go down uh, with a sack like a sack of spuds of course they are pending some EFL punishments of course for the dodgy dealings in the past and I think ultimately justice is, is will be coming to Pride Park at long last of course they dodged it last time around and of course they dodged of course, a survival last round by the skin of their teeth. But I don't think they're going to miss out this time round. 24th, they're going down. 
into 11th spot, we have Reading. Of course, last season they just dipped out of the playoffs, ultimately tumbling. I think whether they finished seventh, eighth, something like that. Of course, they, they just lacked that extra bit of uh, pizzazz last campaign. This campaign, of course, without Omar Richards at the back there, that's one major loss. They may even lose a couple of other familiar faces or, or, or uh, prominent figures uh, for their first team. Uh, and again, I've never really believed in the coach. I think he got a little bit lucky this past season. And I think that this new campaign uh, will be much more difficult for them to get back to where they were. I think the slump will continue early doors into the new season and I, and I just don't think they're going to respond uh, anytime soon. So into tap spot is of course my very own Bapa Rovers, that's right, of course, Tony Mowbray's boys will be hoping for a better season, uh, specifically at the back end of last, last season's campaign. And, of course, keeping the hold of Adam Armstrong's goals will be absolutely paramount. On the, on the flip side, of course, if we were to sell him, which we probably are, uh, we need to reinvest with, of course, multiple multiple um, attacking options. Of course, losing near on 30 goals in the campaign. And, of course, your creative influence, that is, of course, Harvey Elliott and more. And, of course, a, a threadbare midfield. It could be a very, very, bit, uh, a very, very huge season for Rovers. I do anticipate them. They get the recruitment spot on, just like they did last season with Kaminsky, and of course strengthen the, 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 the forwards this time around, and maybe even uh, defensively as well. So I'm thinking a good rebound season for Rovers, but again, unfortunately shy of those illustrious playoffs. So into ninth spot, of course, we had the unlucky losers. It is Barnsley, of course. For them to make any sort of resurgence or uh, rebound from, of course, that player failure, number one priority is, of course, keeping the manager. He has been an absolute revelation for Barnsley. Celtic might be sniffing around. Some other uh, uh, high, high echelon clubs might be sniffing around. Of course, in the Premier League as well. Crystal Palace looking for new managers. Wolverhampton Wanderers as well. So keeping hold of Ishmael will, of course, uh, make much more of a stronger campaign for Barnsley. But if they were to lose him, uh, despite their recent record of bringing in some really good managers, I just think it's going to be a, a, a more keeping themselves in this division uh, than anything else. But I have gone bold. I think they will keep the manager, Ishmael, so I'm going to go with ninth. To eighth spot now, we have, of course, got Bournemouth, that's right, with Jonathan Woodgate at the helm. Uh, it must be promotion at the minimum for Jonathan Woodgate to remain at the job. Uh, and I think he's going to fall, 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 uh, fall short on this one once again, ultimately arriving just two points, uh, two spaces below the old playoff spots. Um, uh, there will change, they'll, they, I'm sure they'll change the manager, of course, midway through the season if things aren't picking up. And again, I just think Woodgate needs to earn his spurs lower down the Football League uh, to, uh, to, to kind of get that uh, re reputation he, he he had once as a player, now as a manager. So for me, I think Bournemouth are going to fall short. Um, and again, with that hefty wages on the on on the books, they're going to they're going to be uh, they, they'll need to get responses out of those players uh, in order for them to warrant that uh, the wages that they get. But for me, I think they're going to fall short in a. So up into seventh now, I've gone bold on this one, went with QPR, of course, Warburton's boys were great last season, attacking-wise, and of course, all, all eyes or all hope will lie on, of course, the fact that if they could get Charlie Austin in on another deal, of course, he was tremendous on loan, it might be, it might be a bit of an ambitious pitch to make that a, a, a permanent transi transaction, and of course, Watford were sniffing around early doors about getting him on the, on the books for themselves, so we'll see, of course, how that plays out, but of course, if they were to get Charlie Austin, if they can keep, their, of course, their attacking players, Ilias Chair, of course, and of course the mainstays of it. They might make a push uh, even closer to those playoffs in eighth spot. Oh, in sixth spot, we've got, of course, Middlesbrough with Neil Warnock's boys. They'll get into the playoffs this time around. Unfortunately, they're one of the teams that did just dip out at the last last stage. Bit of a clear out as well at Middlesbrough at the moment. Of course, Britta Sommelonga going, Ashley Fletcher as well, and some other familiar names with Middlesbrough's campaign. Long-standing familiar names with Middlesbrough on their way out. But, of course, new campaign, new era. Warnock will get them recharged, and they'll go again. And this time, they'll make it into the playoffs and maybe get themselves back into the Premier League. Into fifth spot now, we've got, of course, Fulham with Scotty Parker's boys, of course, uh, subsequently relegated from the Premier League. Will they bounce back at the first attempt? Well, if they are, they're going to have to do it the hard way, and that is, of course, through the playoffs. Of course, Scotty Parker's stock is still reasonably high of, keys, of, of the three managers that went down uh, with, their, with their relegated clubs. His, his, uh, his uh, sort of... Uh, attractiveness is still there. Of course, some Premier League managers may see him as a, a, a cheap, affordable option, local option as well, to go and, of course, try and save their own seasons next season back in the Premier League. But, of course, Fulham will try and keep a hold of him uh, to maybe get them back uh, as a bit of a yo-yo club back into the Premier League once again. Of course, the futures of, of some of their key personnel will, will be uh, the deciding factor, I think, if they're going to be a make or break uh, back in the Championship this season. So, But for me, I'm going to play it safe once again. Fifth spot, uh, that's Fulham. Good to fourth spot we've got, of course, Nottingham Forest. Chris Hewton's boys did a, a bit of a, a, a make-or-do make season last season. 
Of course, the ex-Geordie manager will have bigger aspirations on his hands this time around. I do see it in him. He is a very, very credible manager. He's done well uh, in his previous campaigns in the Championship. And I think he will go uh, that step and beyond with Nottingham Forest. Of course, they're always in and amongst it uh, over the recent seasons. And of course, a couple of seasons back, they did have that, that, near, that near miss with, of course, ultimately falling out of the playoffs. Last season was a season of, tra uh, of transition. Of course, they, they, they got rid of Lamucci, bringing in Hewton in again. And in his full, first full campaign, I think he will get them into the playoffs and maybe even get getting back into the Premier League. So fourth spot, Nottingham Forest. So into third spot, we have West Bromwich Albion. That's right, of course, we don't know who their manager is going to be. It looks like it's going to be Chris Wilder. I'm still not too sure if he's made out for West Brom. Uh, of course, he was very, very successful with Sheffield United. But with West Brom, it could be a little bit uh, two contrasting sort of styles. So I'm, I'm, I'm hedging my bets on this one. I think they wait, will make the playoffs. I don't think they'll go up automatically. I just think they'll be in, in that mix. Uh, and ultimately, will they get promoted? We'll have to wait and see. So third spot, West Bromwich Albion. Third time lucky, of course, for Swansea City. That's right, I've got them going up in second spot. That's right, Stevie Cooper. Uh, forever the bridesmaid, never the bride. But he'll get it right this time and he won't have to do it via the playoffs. He'll go through the automatics top two. Um, yeah, of course, again, his stock is high. A lot of these managers uh, who made it to the playoffs, of course, will see their stock tremendously high. Of course, Barnsley's coach, uh, one of the another most attractive options out there. But Stevie Cooper could be also an attractive option for a Premier League boss or Premier League club looking for a new manager. Again, keeping a hold of him. I think you'll be right back in the, definitely in the top six but for me I think they're going to go one step beyond and into the top two and of course uh, compete for the title as well so Swansea City keep your eyes open it's going to be a tremendous season for you next time around of course, at the number one spot, it will be Sheffield United. Of course, just hired Djokovic to come in to, to at the helm to take over from, of course, Heckenbottom and Chris Wilder previously over at Bramall Lane. Of course, he knows how to do it. He's done it with Fulham. Of course, did he do it with Watford as well? Yeah, that's right. So he's got track record of getting them out of the championship. And I think he'll get them out of it at the first attempt. They'll go up as champions. Of course, they've got a very, very good looking squad as well with a lot of a lot of key players already attracting attention uh, from further afield. Of course, they've got that midfield general, Sanderberg, in there. Of course, the guy currently on loan, he, he belongs to of course Sheffield United, but it's actually on loan at Belgium, attracting interest out in Turkey, so he could also be sold, so a lot of key players could be sold to reinvest anyway for more scrappy dappy new kind of players to get themselves out of it but I do think they'll have too much, and of course with Joe Pichich in charge We'll get over the line. But that's it, my friends. That is it. That's what I think will happen in this season's Premier League. Of course, uh, the, the actual table has dropped down here somewhere alongside me in the bath. Of course, on the road, that's right. And well, this is my early door predictions. They are likely to change. We'll revisit them, of course, closer to the start of the season, which I believe is around about August the 10th. So maybe around about August the 1st, we'll come back and we'll redo it all. But yes, what do you think about that? Do you agree with me with Sheffield United going up? Do you agree with me with the likes of, 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 of Derby County going down? Let me know your thoughts and, of course, opinions in the old comment section down below. And, of course, make sure you check out the links as well. I'm on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and, of course, Patreons and Hot Tubs. HotTubs.com, that's where I'm at. Uh, but, yeah, that's it, my friends. That's it. Make sure you check out the old Discord as well. That's wide open. And, of course, make sure you bang the old subscribe. Until then, I'll see you soon for some more action. And, yes, I promise you, next time you see me, I will have underpants on. Until then. I am out.